Hi everybody. Uh, over the past several weeks, I've been putting together a, a new course looking at how to estimate and model sort of ecological populations. And, and part of that uh, course has been looking at closed population capture recapture studies. Now in there we talk about study design. And there's a few little tips that I sort of uncovered that I thought might be useful uh, that people might be interested in. So the, the basic idea is that we try to estimate uh, the population size or the, the abundance, the number of individuals in an area. And we usually refer to that as N, the number of individuals. Now the idea is that we go out there and we try to capture these individuals a number of different times. And each time we, we mark any new animals we haven't caught before, then we put up this record of how many animals we've caught uh, with each survey. And every time we go out there, there's some capture probability of capturing uh, an individual. And we use ref usually refer to that as P, a capture probability. Now, when we're designing a study, we have to sort of think about these things, and in particular, how much effort, how many times do we need to go out there to try and sample this population in order to get a good estimate of our abundance or population size, uh, you know, this value N. And there's different ways of, of doing that or, or quantifying that. And one way that's commonly used is using the coefficient of variation or the, the CV. So the CV, the way that's calculated, that is the, the standard error of our quantity of interest divided by the estimate for that as well. So just whatever our, our estimate is. So basically it's looking at, you know, relatively, how much uncertainty do we have about some estimate or some quantity of interest. And so in a capture-recapture situation, there's some different ways we could calculate that or some different aspects. We could calculate our CV for our population size. Okay, so we estimate our population size, we look at, you know, how large is the standard error relative to that. And here I've got a, a couple of graphs for doing so. And the first one here is when we have our capture probability P is equal to 0.2. And on this graph what we see is that along the x-axis we have the number of samples, the number of times we repeatedly sample this population. And just note that how that coefficient of variation decreases as the number of samples increases. The other thing to note there is how uh, we've got different curves, there's different lines on this plot, uh, and each line is for a different population size. And so we get a, a larger coefficient of variation, a larger CV, when we have a smaller population size. Okay, so what that means is that if we are dealing, so our, our degree of precision, our, our level of um, um, precision that we have in our estimate, our CV, it also depends upon the population size. So for example, if we're trying to achieve a coefficient of variation of, of 0.1 or 10%, which means our, our standard error is 10% um, of the size of the estimate itself, if we're trying to achieve a CV of 0.1, then if we're sampling or have a population size of 200 animals, you know, roughly, um, this graph would suggest that we want to be sampling the population about four times when that capture probability is about 0.2. Whereas if the population size is only 20 animals, to get that same level of precision, a CV of 0.1, then this graph would suggest we need to sample that population 10 times. So quite a lot more. We need to get, do quite a lot more effort to get that same level of precision when we have a smaller population. Now what happens if we have a, a higher capture probability? So for example, if it's 0.4, as in this graph here now. Well, again, to achieve that CV of 0.1, well, firstly, note that all of those lines are a lot smaller. Overall, our, our level of precision is a lot better than when the detection probability is, is lower. And to achieve that CV of 0.1, this time, if we have 200 animals, then we only need about two surveys to achieve that. Whereas if we have 20 animals, again, it's lower, but we still need about perhaps four surveys. So the number of repeat surveys we need to do depends upon both our um, level of detection, our, our sorry, capture probability, and also the number of animals that we think are out there. At least that's when we have our CV of, sorry, our CV in terms of our estimate of the number of individuals that are out there. Now, 
our abundance estimate, or a number of animals that we are interested in, can be broken up into two things. We can break that up into the number of animals that were seen at least once while we've been collecting our data. Okay, and that's often denoted as MT plus one. And also, the number of animals that we never see. And this term here is, is known exactly. We know exactly how, how many animals we saw at least once. So when we're estimating our population size, really what we're estimating is that number of unseen animals. So instead of talking about the coefficient of variation in population size, we could talk about the coefficient of variation for the number of unseen animals. And if we do that, um, we get slightly different results. So here on the screen now we've got some, some more plots, and this time these are some plots of that coefficient of variation for the number of unseen individuals. And those plots are quite different. Notice that this time instead of that CV always getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the number of samples that we take uh, increases, there's actually some minimum number and then that CV starts going up again. So sort of this optimum now. And also note that all of those lines are essentially parallel, uh, or at least uh, they all have a minimum at the same place. Um, and so all that suggests is that it doesn't matter what the population size is, there is some sort of magic number of repeat surveys you want to do, or sorry, number of samples you want to take in order to minimize our coefficient of variation um, on the number of unseen animals that we're estimating. And so when that uh, capture probability is again about 0.2, our coefficient of variation is minimized when we have um, six samples from our population uh, and that's irrespective of the population size whereas if we have a capture probability of 0.4 that uh, minimum shifts a little bit uh, it's a reduced it's around about three uh, samples so again um, just some interesting ideas that you can have in terms of sample size uh, when we're doing these capture recapture experiments um, and the idea here is that we can use these results to try and then design our study. If we have some idea about what we think capture probability might be, we can roughly figure out how many samples we want to do, depending upon whether we want to try and set up these studies to get a precise estimate of abundance or the number of unseen individuals. Now, the reason we get different curves for these different two uh, CVs is because as we do more and more samples, then you know, we see more and more of the animals that are actually out there. So this number here is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and if we could go an infinite number of times, of course, we'd see everybody. Uh, and this number here would be zero. So at cer a certain stage, we don't want to do too much effort because you know, this quantity here is getting relatively small anyway. And so proportionally, our CV starts going up again. Now, we can also take these results and say, well, okay, if we do studies of this type, how many animals do we want us to roughly capture in order to get a good estimate? So again, here's a couple of figures for you to look at. And so again, when detection, our capture probability is about 0.2. If we're taking the situation where uh, our CV for our number of unseen individuals is minimized at around about six samples, this graph here suggests that irrespective of to how many animals there really are out there, we want to have about, capture about 75% of them. So that means you know, if the sample size, sorry, if the population size is about 20, we probably want to be seeing about 15 of those animals, uh, whereas if the population size is 200, we want to be seeing about 150. Whereas when capture probability is, is sort of 0.4, and so if we have three samples in that situation, this graph suggests we want to be capturing about 80% of the individuals at least once during the survey work. So there you have it, I hope you found that useful. Now, all these results are based on what we call the M0 model, which is when uh, capture probabilities assume to be the same for everybody, for all the animals out there. Uh, there are other mark recapture models that can be used, and these results may not hold quite like that, but the same idea can be applied. And if you want to see a bit more detail and look at some of the R code that's been used to generate these figures, then look at our news tips and tricks website, oh, sorry, page on our, our Proteus website, and uh, feel free to explore some of the other posts that are there as well. So thanks for your attention. I hope you found that really useful.